Good evening to you all. Tonight, I will be narrating one of our past Dungeons & Dragons games. This will be the first part of many, so please let me know in the comments section if you enjoy it. This series is entitled Siege of the Silver Peaks. I'll be your dungeon master this evening, so listen and enjoy. It's now Alturak, the second moon of the year. Things have been slow for the last few moons, where you have spent your time away, crafting, tinkering, studying and training by yourself to keep your mind and reflexes sharp. Finally, a few days ago, you received some remarkable news, one that you've been waiting for all this time. An associate from the Great Council has informed you of potential employment if you accept. You are to meet a blue-robed emissary come midweek in the pensive pilgrim at sundown, where he'll provide the particulars of the matter. The first one to arrive was Reskendor Elmsdale. Though he is a cleric, he has a weakness for two things, fire whiskey and women. Oi, barkeep, I'd like to order one bottle of fire whiskey. I'm expecting some friends tonight, so I'd like a good head start. Come in right up. The barkeep replies from behind his station. Soon, right after, our next two adventurers arrive. Aye, you certainly took your time in going here. If I only knew that the veterans she mentioned were the two of you, I wouldn't have agreed. And greetings to you too. A few minutes of waiting should be no problem. I see that there are still no new hairs on your head. Glad to see you in high spirits, Reskander. It's been a while. I scan the area for anything suspicious. The tavern is nearly empty. There is a man and a woman seated together in the far end of the room, eating and drinking quietly. There is a lone older gentleman dwarf seated at the bar. None of them looks suspicious. He occasionally speaks with the robust barkeep who randomly goes in and out of the kitchen doing what he normally does. I took the liberty of ordering ahead. Let me pour ye some fire whiskey. A few moments later, a huge man enters, wearing a full plate of white and gold, and approaches your table. Are you our fourth man? First time I have seen you round here. Sight gets impaired as one grows old. <laughs> Name's Amori. It's my pleasure to meet you lot. So, does the Royal Guard always work this late? I work the second hour. I ran here as soon as I got off. Apologies if I kept you all waiting. Everything's dandy. Only our cleric friend here has his breeches tight all the time. <laughs> Signs of aging. I'm Galore, by the way. This here's Dedent, and you've met Reskendor. So, does anyone know who we're meeting? Not a clue. Didn't? I was only told that we were meeting an old friend. A trustworthy wizard, so we shouldn't be bothered. Those two words usually don't go together in a sentence. So of all people, why did they send ye? No offence meant, but we have not worked with a lot of paladins before. I was with the Mage's Guard for a couple of years before I was transferred to the Royals. Oh, those old wizards would surely love you. The pay was good. I didn't get to do much since the wizards rarely left the castle. So why aren't ye donning the purples? I requested a transfer on purpose, as I didn't like the things I was seeing towards the end. I could only imagine. The Royal Guards have a good brotherhood. I like it better here. While you are engrossed to get to know each other better, suddenly a tall, mysterious, cloaked figure enters the tavern. He's wearing a blue robe. He slowly scans the interior from under his hood. Once satisfied, he carefully approaches your table. He sits himself down and begins to reveal his face. I assume you are the group that Fiowin assembled. I'm Caiaphas. He gestures to both Dident and Galur, who then acknowledges the newcomer with a nod. Let me be brief as time is precious. I am here to offer you a quest. It's not the easiest, but since you are veterans of the trade, I expect this not to be the hardest either. 
especially if the instructions are to be precisely followed. The group listens intently. You are to retrieve a lost artifact, a goblet. It is located deep within the Silver Mountains to the east of Eosafre. What is this goblet? Is it a holy goblet? You came across a lot of magical goblets throughout your studies, but nothing brings to mind at the moment. There is a crypt hidden beneath the mountain. You will need a key to open the lock of the crypt. You will acquire this key in Farrowind Village. Go inside the church in Farrowind Village, leave a rose on the altar and wait a few minutes. Make sure the altar boy sees you leaving the rose. Wait for Samwell to arrive as he will deliver you the key. It's a puzzle key and he may ask for a small fee in return. How much are we talking about here? About 500 will do. Nothing more, nothing less. If for anything, avoid any cultists in the area as the village is run by them. There are over a hundred of those bastards, so be warned, do not engage. They may be insignificant individually, but if they get to swarm you, it would be unpleasant. I hate cultists. Who do they worship? I believe they worship Vecna. But that is unimportant. Once the key is with you, exit the town immediately. The entrance to the path up the Silver Mountains is about 34 miles northwest of Farrowind Village. Take the Shadowlands Road to the right as the Highlands Road is littered with orcs and goblins. Once you're at the foot of the mountain, climb up the pass. When you've reached the top, you will find a hundred foot wide gorge. Cross it. Beyond the gorge, you'll see a small underground tunnel of about 200 feet in length. Pass through the tunnel. After the tunnel, you'll see the crypt entrance hidden beneath the rocks. Find the keyhole and use the key. Why don't you come with us, Caiaphas? I'm sure your days of adventuring are not yet over. I would not want anything more than to go with you on this journey but I have to make preparations with my order for when the goblet arrives. And how much are we expecting to receive? For this, I'm offering 3,000 gold pieces each. Plus, you get to keep any treasure you find along the way. Surely we are worth over twice as much. We are but a small order, and most of what we'll pay you will come from our coffers. Perhaps a donation can be made to our congregation in return for our services rendered. A small amount can be added, but as I've mentioned, that is the most we can give you. Thanks for the generosity, sir. But if I may ask, is there anything else we need to know? I almost forgot whatever you do. Keep the goblet dry. Not a drop nor trickle should touch the insides. What happens if it gets wet? The goblet with glow and azure hue if it gets wet. If that happens, dispose of the contents immediately and pat it dry. Do we die if it gets wet? I wouldn't dream of it. It surely would be a fatal consequence if it occurs. <laughs>